I had two chances to break out of my Disney mold. One I've mentioned is Searchers, the other with Bus Stop. Since those didn't happen, uh, and since I never had another feature film at Disney or even at Paramount that was a, a picture that I could move forward with, um, I, was, I ended up, when I decided to leave the film business, somewhat, I didn't leave it because I was bitter or anything, but I was just somewhat disappointed that I didn't do some of the things that I thought I could do, and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get those opportunities. And then one day, I sat down and I thought about it, and I, it came to me. Here I am, a young guy who's just broken into this business. But this business in the 1950s was populated with Jimmy Stewart, Gregory Peck, um, Henry Fonda, uh, on and on and on. There were 20 leading men. Uh, or, or maybe 30 leading men who all had historical relationships with studios, producers, directors, and writers, and personal. And, and as the movie industry was making its segue from the old circumstance to the independent producers, I, you know, I was pretty much left with television. I became a uh, producer or co-producer of that film with a man named Hal Stanley. And uh, we did 31 half-hour films, and they have disappeared. I, 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 even though I own a portion of them, I have no idea where they are. Uh, I don't, I'm going to look on the internet and see if, if there are films that I could recover that have someone uh, perhaps recorded. But uh, at any rate, it was a very interesting experience. Uh, I was right next door to Dick Van Dyke. <clears throat> and uh, I think three things that I remember about that in particular. One is that uh, Hal Stanley uh, had a, a certain sense of a kind of a genius because each one of those 30 films, and, and I would love to have them just for this reason. Uh, each guest star we had were major, major stars whose day had passed. Like I got to work with Buster Keaton, and Harpo Marx, and um, uh, Red Foley played, a, played a, an uncle on the show, and a uh, legendary country singer. And uh, all those are are gone, you know. Uh, the other interesting thing about it was that uh, Cubby Broccoli, uh, one of the producers of 007, came by the set one day and talked with me a few minutes and left very certain that Sean Connery was the right guy for the part. <laughs> oh, you were being looked at as well, 007? Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny, you know. I mean, you, I mean, it, it sort of boggles your mind that Fess Parker could be 007. I don't know. But anyway, it was nice to meet him. Did your portrayal differ from Jimmy Stewart's? I mean, did you try to space yourself away from him, or did you try to emulate him? Or? No, I didn't. You know, there's only one Jimmy Stewart, and uh, and it was sort of a one of the things that you do in films. You just make the same story again and try to, in some way. Although um, I, this didn't resemble it. It, it was a very light piece in, in terms of what we actually did. Did you ever talk to Stewart, Jimmy Stewart about it? Well, I talked to Jimmy Stewart in, uh, in 58, not about that film, um, but before that. And uh, he gave me some insight, which was a little bit too late. Um, but what he, I, I, he didn't know that I had uh, left Disney about the time I was leaving, and uh, he was he was telling me the way that he worked throughout his career was that when he wasn't making a film, he spent his time trying to find a film, a story. And uh, I wasn't that industrious or 
cerebral about my career, so I would go sailing or, you know, go off in the Thule someplace between jobs and sort of do whatever I did. Mm -hmm. But that was good advice, and I, I would have uh, perhaps um, taken advantage of that. I could have earlier with Disney, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know enough, frankly. I, I was too absolutely green.